Okay, YouTube, I'm going to make that 10-minute video, hopefully less than five minutes. This is a Supra iBox, and it is a real estate lockbox, or what is left of one. I dismantled this the other day. My girlfriend's dad had this since he bought his house 10 years ago. Real estate agent never came back to get it. He wanted his house key out of it, and I told him I'd be willing to take it and get the house key out, and I did just that. I got the So, the way this normally works is this piece goes in like this a little bit um the agent would have either a keypad looking device that looks like a pocket calculator or a smartphone app on the newer ones because the newer boxes are actually bluetooth this one's not um, um they would have a app or a little keypad they would enter in their personal code into that keypad and it transmits it via IRDA infrared to this transmitter receiver. The keypad and the lock actually talk back and forth, two-way communication. It's got a Texas Instruments my microprocessor on there. I want to say it was like 16-bit. Um, maybe even 16 kilobit. I don't know. You could look up the specs on it. It is a M430F147 microprocessor. There's some other capacitors. I think that's like an op amp on there or something transistors such resistors programming contacts big capacitor and a lithium battery three volt lithium battery so it works with these solenoids that electric electronically activated little magnetic solenoids um i first thought i could get into it by smacking it really hard with a hammer most cheap safes safes that you would get at a hardware store big box store walmart or whatever aren't or anything but safe. They're crap. Sentry, Honeywell, Brinks, they're crap. You could usually smack them in a certain area with a certain amount of force and it'll open. I tried that with this. I hit it on the sides, on the top. Um, as I was pu as I was pushing on the drawer, pull pulling on the drawer, trying to get it to come out, it wouldn't open. Once I got it, once I drilled into it, I had to drill it. I realized that these solenoids are double-sided. They're dual solenoids. Um, so, if you smack one side, it may knock this one back down inside temporarily, but it's not going to knock that one down. So, there's really no way to use the hammer attack to open this. The amount of drilling and hammering it did take to open took about 10 to 15 minutes. I mean, you're not going to spend that amount of time on a house and draw attention to yourself right out in the front of the house doing that. So, that's that wins me points. Two, this steel is pretty, I mean, it's not real thick, but it's a few centimeters thick, I would say. Um, a few millimeters, rather. I'll tell you real quick, for those that want to know, I mean, it's about probably about two millimeters thick. Um, about four sixty-fourths of an inch. So it's some pretty good steel. The circuit is well made. I mean, these do have a, a, a finite life. I mean, once this battery dies, there's no easy way to open this box. Just replace this battery and put it back together. I mean, you basically get a new box. The new ones now are Bluetooth, and um, it uses an app on your phone that you can download. You can buy these boxes on eBay, but the app is no good to just anyone unless you have an account with that service. So unless you're actually an appraiser or a real estate agent or maybe like someone that owns a lot of properties and you use these on your properties like a rent house, you're not going to be able to really use the app for anything because it's not active. The, um, I don't know if there's an encrypted connection between the keypad and the reader on the non-Bluetooth versions. I'm sure the Bluetooth versions use the Bluetooth encryption, but I don't know much about how these communicate with each other. I know it's two-way communication. It's a dual communication link. So, I'm guessing with this having a battery in it, that this probably has some kind of a clock circuit. So you couldn't just use a replay attack. Every transmission is probably time-stamped that you could... Um, you couldn't just capture one infrared transmission and resend it. If the timestamp didn't match what the device's internal clock had, 
It would probably just reject it, I would guess. I don't know. But we are now past five minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and end this video. I just thought this was neat. Um, you see me rip apart security stuff and tell you how insecure it was. I actually think this is pretty dang secure. And if you want to see a picture of one intact, just look up Supra iBox and you can find one that's all there. Or if you want to buy one, you could probably find one on eBay for about 10 to 20 bucks. So have fun, stay safe, don't do anything too stupid. Enjoy.